I am live. That's what it says. Hmm. Hopefully that's progress. Hey. Yeah, that positivity out here. Well, it's showing that on, on the one where I'm walking with you. It's not showing me anything on. Oh. Hmm? That cat image. Um, okay. All right. Well, as soon as it looks uh, like. Audio's live. The audio's live. Well, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. Hear me, but don't see me. Imagine, if you will, a painting show. Well, roughly we've made airtime at least. Ha. Mm -mm -mm. It's really surreal listening to it on my phone and in real time. Yeah. I'm glad it can provide some at least neatness, if anything. Um. But yeah, there's still no digital. Hmm. Audio was progress, though. Yeah, it was. Didn't we test it and it looked fun? Well, a second ago, ain't that the fun thing about technology? Yeah. Select broadcast and start streaming. Do you need to come look? Maybe. We'll find out in a second. That's why you have to get your kids to do it for you. Man, that's the freaking truth. I do not know that the kids are going to do it. Sixth grade last year. <laughs> well, I've only had one Corey, so that narrows it down. All right. Well, if at any point, my lovely producer, if you find out that it does start going, let me know. Well, you're still just audio. Just audio. Yes, sir. No, at least just audio something. Projectors, system tray. Yeah, sure. Oh, there you go. We have visual. Well, that's progress for sure, then. Mm -hmm. I like the sound of that. Well done. Audio and visual. Yep. What a modern age. Good job. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it's showtime, roughly. <laughs> yeah, mean? these fancy computers won't stop me. All right. So... Today I was thinking about doing nice little evening painting. Now, I thought about using a black canvas, but it occurs to me that not everyone has a black canvas. So, we're going to work from a white canvas, and next time I want to do a black canvas one, I guess I'll have to warn everybody. But that's fine. We can make it work either way. There's all sorts of sketches on here that I did previously, but none of that matters now. Let me go grab... One of my little painting guys. There we go. There we go. So, this is a, a rough little painting I sketched up earlier, just practicing. It's always good to practice. Even the professionals need to shake the rust off their gears every now and then. All right, so, for this painting, uh, painting, painting uh, we're using mostly, Black, blue, I'll probably use a pinch of this red. It's good old fashioned white. If I throw anything else in there, I'll let you know. All right, so I'm thinking about doing some kind of a evening painting, maybe a nice bright moon in there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with 
a little bit of white paint. Where's my moon gonna go? Actually, I like to have my little painting guide with me. Where do I put it? Oh, there it is. Never hurts to have your reference nearby. All right, so first things first, we gotta find out our light source. If I want my moon in there, well, I dropped a piece of paint right there anyway, so I guess that's where the moon goes. I'm just gonna lay down a touch of white, and you're gonna blend outward from that spot. Let's go ahead and we get a touch of black. I'm gonna come in here, touch of blue. We're gonna start work for the corners. We're gonna I'm going to knock these corners in real quick. Corners are typically, if you're thinking about it, that's your sky. And also, the top of your painting, funny enough, if it's the sky, closest to you as well. And I always like to start with the furthest things in the, uh, the painting first. It's a really good idea to work your way forward. That way the objects in the front can overlap with the objects in the back but we're just getting a nice rich dark blue going down all over this sky we got that white there too and we're going to blend as we get closer to it into that little white section I painted right here so I'm just working that black and blue together Just like this. We're gonna get that evening sky put in first. All right, we're gonna get that. Oh, there you go. Colors are mixing. Like I said, we want to blend from that light source part that I put down at first. Work out. Hey, Vince. Here goes my son. That don't hurt my feelings one bit. And to think, I didn't know if any of my kids would show up. My biological kids, my students, I expected some of them would. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to lay down this guy. And you see, as I throw that white into that dark that I already put down, it's already kind of creating this, like, uh, cloudy effect. So right off the bat, we're off to a really good start. And you want to work from that bright spot and just blend it out to your edges. I got my whole chunk of white right there. We're just going to go ham fisted with it. And I got myself just a regular one inch flat brush right now. And all I've done is mix in some black, some blue, some white. I haven't done anything but those three colors yet. Ooh, look at that. That's a nice looking cloud. I almost want to leave it. I say that all the time, but usually as I get through these things some of the stuff I made at the beginning I'll just go ahead and do away with later oh yeah that's looking good a little screws in the way there you go all right and we're just gonna work our way out oops it'd help if I didn't knock my whole dang palette on the ground no spills we're all good yeah. benefit of being live I guess all right, so we want this little moon spot to be as bright as possible before we actually throw the moon in. And I'm just kind of doing this little crisscross X pattern, nothing too complicated. And I might come back in and, you know, add some more of this dark into the corners as we're going along. Uh, Crystal, if you actually see any good questions, you know, let me know so I can answer them on the fly. I will. So far, um, you've got students popping in saying hey. Well then hey back. I'm glad y'all could show up. <laughs> you never know how these things are going to work. I've had streams that have 130,000 people on it, and I've had streams that had only a dozen, so it kind of works out that way sometimes. All right. <laughs> that sky's coming in nice. I think I'm going to push these corners back. And you want to push something back into the background. You're just gonna, oop, there goes that paint thing I knocked down. And I just spilled paint all over my couch. Oh well. It's washable. It is washable. 
Everything's washable. I'm not gonna wash it, but I should. I'll probably wash it. That's why yeah. we have the steam cleaner. I'm gonna push these corners back a little bit. That's gonna add some depth to it. So I'm adding black and white, and I'm just kind of working this edge in. I'm gonna blend it nice and soft. There we go. We got all sorts of little things happening now. We got another little touch of white. I want to clean my brush out. Bob Ross said, "Beat the devil out of your brush." So that's what I try to do. And I'm using acrylic paints today. If you're using oil, oil tends to be a little bit more forgiving because you can. Uh, really easily quickly go back in and blend and move things easier acrylic dries really fast so you have to kind of work quickly but if you use a touch of a uh, of water it'll really loosen up that paint and you'll get kind of a well I say an old oil painting effect all right so we're just gonna Start just dropping some random patterns. All I'm doing is just tapping into this canvas. I'm not trying to overthink it too much. I'm going to rotate my brush a little bit as I go along. Okay, Mr. Moon, where are you? Let's say you're right there. Ooh, look at that moon shining away. I love it. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So we got a little cloud thing going on. Now I'm going to use a fan brush for this next little bit. I'm going to throw some clouds in there. We got this uh, wonderful kind of hazy backdrop. Ooh, this brush is about stiff as a board. I gotta loosen up. You don't clean your brushes out well enough. Sometimes paint gets wad wadded up in there. All right, so I'm going to get <clears throat> a little bit of this black. I'm going to get touch of that white too. Let's start getting ourselves a little gray. Let's get brave and maybe just even a touch of blue so it works with that sky as well. And I'm just going to do a little side to side. We're going to make some sweepy clouds. And I'll say it a million times but the fun thing about clouds is you can't hardly get them wrong. As long as you're having fun typically you got a cloud that works for you. There we go. Ooh, look at that. There's a moody sky going on already. There we go. Ooh, you know what? So, I just dropped that in. That's a nice hearty chunk of paint. Sometimes it's good to wear out the paint a little bit. You know, just... I say wear it out. I'm kind of diffusing that black color a little bit with the, uh, the other paint I've already thrown down. We're just going to decide where these clouds kind of live. Pull a little bit more black paint out. A little bit more blue. A little touch of white. We don't want to be too, too dark. Let's see if I can show it. Oh, nope. I didn't hardly get anything on there. Shake it out. All right. There we go. So, just a little touch of white. You know, blend it up a little bit. Mm. Where's that next cloud go? There he goes. Right What's there. the difference between acrylic paint and watercolor? Uh, so, as far as like a chemical composition, you'd have to talk to a science teacher about that one. Uh, as far as uh, how they blend together, they kind of function in a similar way. Watercolor has a limit to how many layers you can put on it. Because at some point, if you keep adding watercolor on top of watercolor, eventually, the color layers you threw down will start to pick up. And all those beautiful things you threw down to begin with, well, they won't be there anymore. So you kind of have to plan things out a little bit more. And watercolor, in my opinion, involves a lot more patience than I'm willing to put up with. I'm kind of an impatient person. All right, so let's see. Ooh, look at that moody sky. I like it. That was looking good. We're just throwing some dark clouds in there. Ooh, wow, look at that. That's already looking so good. We could almost stop right there. Now, we haven't done anything complicated outside of just basic X patterns and just blending these colors together. One of the things I see people
struggle with a lot is putting color on top of color. You shouldn't be afraid of your colors running over each other. Worst case scenario mm -hmm. is you got to, you know, let it dry and paint over it again if you don't like what you did. But I don't see that as a huge deal. That's just a matter of how long you're willing to wait for the end result. So if you decide to you know, <coughs> work alongside me or let's just say you're uh, weeks down the road and you want to pick this thing up. What was I just saying? I almost, I already forgot. ADHD's a booger. Alright, woo wee. Like that. Alright, so we got these nice dark clouds coming in. I want to put some little highlights on those clouds. And one of the things you want to pay attention to is where's your light source at? So I got this bright shining moon. And that's going to tell you where to put the highlights. So if it's below the moon, you want to put the highlight on top of the cloud because the light is shining down on it. If it's above the moon, you want to make sure you put them highlights on the bottom side. Sounds simple, but it's one of those things you might not think about if you didn't know. All right, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this white. Nothing too big, you know. Let me just say. Your highlight. students are amazing and hilarious. Right there. Yeah, they typically are. I have been lucky to have a bunch of amusing students for the longest time. Oh, look at that. Oh, you know what? I put that on the wrong side. <laughs> I just said pay attention, and then I didn't pay attention. Well, you get to have the wonder of uh, editing on the fly. That's live painting for you. Oh, man, those clouds are looking good. So, light source is there. Highlight needs to go on the bottom. Mr. Wedgworth, you should know better. You've done six million paintings. You should definitely have that one by default. And I'm just getting that fresh white. And I'm just going to tap it in. You can really overdo it this white. It's a nighttime painting, so you don't want it to get too bright. Maybe there's a little cloudy highlight right there. We're just going to work our way around. That's looking good. All right. One of the things you could do, especially if, you, if you're using oil painting, you don't have to really worry about this because oil is a very flexible medium. Unfortunately for acrylic paint, it's not really that way as much. But I've just got some straight water on this brush. I'm really lightly, I'm barely even touching this canvas, and I'm just trying to like soften some of these edges. You want them clouds to be, you know, nice and fluffy and soft. That's looking good. All right, so. I put this highlight right through here on the wrong side, so I'm going to go ahead and cheese it and let's see if we can go back in to fix it. So I use a bunch of black and blue on that one. I'm going to get a touch of black. Let's see, my head shadows in a way. Oh, there we go. Where's a good spot to put that? Touch of black. Elijah and Zoe have just said that this is like ASMR for them and it's extremely calming. <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> All right, so we got a touch of white on one side, touch of black on the other. Hopefully y'all can see that well enough. So, put that on the wrong side. So what I need to do, get that black in there. That touch of blue too. I'm going to balance it out. There we go. We're just going to blend that in. That's a whole new cloud now. I just wiggle that around, kind of smooth it out some. There we go. That's looking better. Boy, that's a dramatic sky. Something doesn't look like that tonight. Okay. Well, where are we going next? We gotta start making some big decisions. We gotta figure out where the heck our land is. So my brush is still wet with some water, so I'm just gonna lightly come across here. And I'm gonna blend this sky color way down into where I think my land is gonna go, because if you're doing a painting, the more you can use the same colors throughout your painting, the better. And it'll make it all seem harmonious. And that's kind of the idea. Whew. Ooh, I like that bright, like that little streak. I didn't even mean for that to happen, but I think it looks kind of neat. All right, so I'm going to put this one up. Where are we going to go next? Had to get a jar of all my favorite brushes. All my favorite brushes are always terrible looking. 
Like, I, I don't even know why a student would do this, but let's see. There we are. Someone cut a chunk out of that one. That might be a fun brush or texture. You know what? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, this is one of my favorite brushes right here. I don't even know the name of it. Which to me kind of emphasizes the relevance that you don't need fancy supplies or anything like that. You don't, Honestly, you only need a handful of colors. I could probably do this whole painting in black, blue, and white if I wanted to. Because as long as you're layering darks and lights in opposition to each other, you'll get this layering effect that, you know, will really <laughs> help create depth. Well, I just said that brush has been through World War II. <clears throat> has been through more than just two wars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I need to come in front of these, like, light grayish-blue colors. So I probably want to get something just a little bit darker than that so that what I paint on it stands out. Because if this is a little bit lighter, the next thing I want to do, come on top of it. Something just a little bit darker. A little bit of blue. I need to show my mixing process. There goes my paint. A little bit of blue touch of black, not too much. I want to just do itty bitty touch of white, not too much. Just to soften that up some. We don't want it to be too intense. Black is a, one of the most powerful colors in your toolkit, so you have to kind of use it sparingly because black will take over your entire painting real quick if you go too ham-fisted with it. So right now, I think in my world, we got a whole, we got a whole row of little trees that just sit along the back of this painting right here. That's looking good. All right, now I showed some of this off today as I was doing kind of my practice runs while my students were finishing up uh, their current assignment. Clean my brush out nice and pretty. All right, so I'm thinking what I would like is some nice water feature I think I might have my land kind of like work its way this way. Maybe I'll throw some good little trees over here. But what you want to do, yeah, this has already got blue paint on it. Can you even tell? Yeah, doesn't matter. Just take my word for it. There is blue on it. All right, so I'm going to go back to my fan brush. Boy, my fan brush has seen better days too. I promise you, I do have good fan brushes. Just, uh... Well, me and this one have been through it, if you can tell, from a normal fan brush with one I use. <laughs> Alright, so I'm thinking we're going to have some water that just goes right through here. Now you see how I have like a little bit of fluff on top, a little bit of fluff on bottom. That's perfect, because this fluff on bottom is going to be my reflection for all this nonsense. What you want to do, we're going to get just the tip of that brush and that white paint. You don't need to be too deep. Just a little bit. That's perfect. And somewhere in the middle of this little fluffy mess, we're going to start going side to side. Now you want your water to lay flat. If you do anything other than side to side, like if you start curving it up too much, you're going to throw the look of your water off and it's going to be kind of confusing. You wonder why things don't look quite right. So, we're going to try to go as horizontal as I can manage. Ooh, wait, look at that. That's a crisp water line right there. And now, you got your nice little trees on top, little reflections on the bottom. We're on our way. So, it says you got to name your brushes. I got to name them? Oh, Lord. I, There's so many. I said I had ADHD. There's no way I'm going to remember all of them. So, this is just your typical, well, I want to say just uh pointed uh I should know the names of these better. I don't. <laughs> this one that looks like this. Let me see if I can find a nice pretty one that isn't so beat up. One of these. It's got your uh, typical narrows down to a point situation. This one's a little bit chunkier than that, but that's fine. So I'm gonna take some of this extra blue. I know that I was already using this right here, so I'm just gonna go side to side. <laughs> Side to side, that's how you're going to make your water. And look at that, it's already happening. I haven't done anything but go side to side. 
Now I said this part over here is going to be land and the fact that I'm going over it with this brush on that area is fine. They're just going to use up all that extra paint. Real soft. As I get closer to these fluffy reflections, I'm barely touching the canvas. I mean, we're talking about two bristles of, and a, a whole bunch of air. All right, let's clean that guy up. Man, look at that. We're already getting the effect we want. Clean my brush out. Now I'm working at my table, so I'm just beating the life out of my table leg right here to knock off that extra water. Okay, so oh, I'm saying I wanted some land over here, so we gotta make some big decisions again. All right, so I'm gonna reach back into this one. Let's get a little bold. I'm gonna throw a little bit of red in there. Why the heck not? I'm gonna warm this up just a little bit, not too much. We gotta decide where is our land gonna go in this? Maybe, maybe it starts right here. Again, we're doing side to side. This is kind of like going with the flow of the land. Maybe there's a little bit of land that shoots out right there. All right, we're going to work in some of that color from before. This is all the same colors I've been using for the sky the entire time. Maybe right here. A little bit right there. We're going to grab a little bit more of this blue. Touch of that black. Work them back in there. Because this is lighter than the color I'm using, I want to use a slightly darker color so it pops out from the background that I'm using. A little touch of blue again. We'll soften up a little bit. So that black's really intense, so you don't want to overdo it. I promise I'm going to try to get a better camera so this shows up a little bit more, but that's kind of the fun of it. I'm doing live anyways. Maybe this land look out, went right over that water line. I guess there's land there now. Now work our way. Where's this land go? Hey, it just works its way all the way down here. So you got it going. You get a touch of that white because that's so dark. Again, we're playing darks and lights back and forth. That's how you're gonna create depth in your painting. Maybe. We got some little grassy guys that live through here. Work that color nice and in it. I'm gonna get my water. Again, oil painting, it very much benefits from the fact that oil moves so well on your canvas. But that water is going to help loosen any acrylic up the same kind of way. So I just got a bunch of water. I'm going to go ahead and knock this whole section in. In my head, all that, all that's going to be where I want my land to go. That's a whole bunch of water. Look at that. All I did was just wet my brush. I'm going to take all that paint that hadn't quite dried yet. I'm just moving it on down. There we go. Fantastic. Woo wee. All right, that's looking good. So, I'm going to say I got some, a little bit of brown here. Yeah, let's get a whole load of brown on there. I'm going to just gently, you can kind of see it right there, mix it in with that dark color I was working before. We're going to throw some mud just side to side again. You're going to go with the flow of the land. And this little dark section of mud is going to add kind of a, the bank of the shore right here. And you can kind of see as I go along, it's going to really help solidify that shoreline some. Ooh wee, I'm pr getting proud of myself as we go along. As you should be. Clean my brush out. All right, where are we going next? I got this whole chunk of land right here. This is fairly dark, so in my head, I need to go the other direction. I want to get a little bit brighter with it. We have this, we have this source of light going right here. So logically, if you're throwing, let's say, little planty guys through here somewhere, 
it's going to pick up. Stop pointing at the thing. I have a screen right in front of me. And I want to point at the screen, but look at that. Look at that. It don't make any sense. I need to be pointing here. I'm training myself as we go along. So I want to put these little planty guys right through here. I want it to be a little bit brighter than what I was doing. Let's find a new brush to play with. So I got myself another little flat brush. This brush is getting pretty old too. Originally, it was uh, perfectly flat, but as you can see, it's starting to fray at the edges. But that's perfect for what I want. I'm gonna get a little bit of this white on the tip of my brush. And go right back into those colors I was playing with before. Mix it up. I'm going to tap it on in. You want to get that paint real worked into your brush. All right. Time to make another bold decision. So, let's say somewhere here. Maybe we got some bushes that go on. They live right there now. I'm going to do another little side to side, a little horizontal motion. Soften that bottom edge up. Okay. I'm gonna work some more in. A little touch of white. Now I keep all the worst brushes around because I'm, I'm of the opinion the more texture your brush ends up getting, the more useful it is for this process. Alright. There we go. So we're layering things like little elements on top of each other. So we started with our moon. That's going to be the furthest back in the painting. And as you move forward, you see like these clouds layer on top of each other. We got this section of dark clouds right here. And we have, or not dark clouds, dark uh, little trees in the background. We're moving a little bit more forward. And this little bright section of, you know, plant life is pushing this section further back. So we're gradually getting deeper and deeper into the painting. And the more you do this, the further back your painting goes. Now in your world, maybe you only have a couple layers of depth and that's all you need. But want to make it look like it goes back forever this is a fantastic method so at this point all I'm doing is I'm just going into this little bit of white paint I have to my side uh -oh. Uh oh video went out did it go out yep just now hilarious <laughs> hilarious well I wonder why. Um, I don't know. Give me a sec. Let me see if I can look up. Well, ain't that fun. Video. Uh, I can still see, see what I'm can... doing. All still I can see audio. is that. Well, if you're still listening, I can still see what I'm doing. So I guess that's not the worst news ever. All right. Someone said you painted the lens. Yeah, I not quite yet. Mm -hmm. I'm a messy painter, but not quite that messy. Uh, make sure all oh, this is plugged in nice and tight. Uh. <laughs> Dead yo. And it sucks. They missed all the stuff that I did just now. Okay. Uh... So, acting a fool machine. Let's see. How do I get you to talk to each other again? These things are so fussy. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, if it does pop back on, please do let me know. All right. All right, what? I'll let you know. Oh, she had my hopes up that was working. I'm sorry. I was just responding to what you requested. Oh, yeah, that's fair. My apologies. Let's see. <laughs> hmm. Elijah. Elijah's a funny kid. Dude, all the kids in this chat have been hilarious. They're certainly funnier than I was as a kid. Same.
I just sat in my paint. That's hilarious. You sat in it? Well, I guess that's just a permanent part of my sweats now. <laughs> yeah, we still have no visuals. That's fine. I'm going to push all the buttons again, I guess. <laughs> okay. Maybe. OBS is currently active. All strange recording will be shut if you know. I don't want to shut it all down. Mm -hmm. Let's check the YouTube side of it. All right. And pushing the button continues. Ah, do, 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 do. Well. Oh, there was a flicker for a brief moment. A moment of flickerage. A flicker, and then the cat came back. Cat, isn't that a song about that? Cat, isn't that a song about that? Cat came back the very next day. Oh. Hmm. Oh. I don't see video on my laptop but i see it on the window i have open on my phone but only for one camera only well give it a second maybe it'll catch up my computer's not exactly the new there computer. we go you're back what we need to have some kind of like sounder so all i did was come in and brighten that up a little bit i'll play things back and forth with those darks and light until i get them right <laughs> the way i want them i'll have it too nighttime I'll we'll make that a little bit darker not too much but that highlight should carry through all right so where are we going next soften that up just a little bit of darker color so let's see I think maybe Let's get a good flat brush going. Actually, we'll use my other fan brush that isn't quite so crappy. Is it working now? Can you see me? Yeah, you're good. Fantabulous. <laughs> All right. Boy, there goes live streaming. If you didn't know this was happening in the moment, there you go. So I'm going to get some blue and some white. I'm just making it straight on top. I'm going to say maybe there's a little tree that lives right there. Get that a little bit brighter. A touch of white. Mix that on in. <laughs> so just tap this guy in. You got a well. I accidentally did two lines, so maybe there's two trees that live there now. All right. Always room for multiple trees. And the sure. camera's out again. Yeah. <laughs> camera's down again. Yeah, that's what I see. Can't exactly say why it's doing all that. So the audio. Well, audio continues to work for some reason. I mean, I mean, I feel like 